Pixar's next animated blockbuster, Onward, releases worldwide next week. But somehow, whether it be by dark magic or greedy capitalistic forethought, there's already an Onward ripoff movie out on demand. I'm Winnie Van Lanningham, and today we're talking about the brazen mockbuster that is Homeward. Spoilers, it features the voice of Joey Lawrence. Before we sully ourselves with visions of rushed CG, I want to take a moment to shout out all of our supporters over on Patreon. Their support not only gets them access to some behind the scenes Nerdwire content, but it also keeps our small team afloat. We also have a Tee Public affiliate store if you want to support us and get some cool officially licensed fandom swag. Now onward to Onward's evil clone Homeward. Homeward is the latest in a long list of fever dream mockbusters by the production company known as The Asylum. They've made groundbreaking hits such as The Avengers Grimm, Atlantic Rim, and Battle Star Wars. Oh, and who can forget Transmorphers? <laughs> Ironically, The Asylum is perhaps best known for their original IP Sharknado, which they've not only milked for five sequels, but they also smashed their shark models together to make two-headed shark attack, and again for three-headed shark attack, and again for five-headed shark attack, and again for six-headed shark attack, and again for, just kidding, any more than six heads on a shark would be redundant. In total, The Asylum has made 18 shark-themed movies that have somehow found their way onto the Sci-Fi Channel or Netflix. Homeward doesn't have a single shark attack in it and is therefore creatively corrupt cinematic trash. Respect your roots, Homeward. This doozy is The Asylum's third animated film, coming hot off the heels of Izzy's Way Home, which was modeled after Finding Nemo and Finding Dory, Troll Land, which was ripped off of Trolls, and Cargo, a knockoff of Cars 3, which was honestly probably better than the original. Homeward is obviously a low-budget Onward, Disney Pixar's first stab at an original IP since 2017's Coco. Onward tells the story of two teen brother elves, Ian and Barley Lightfoot, who are given a magical staff that will allow them to spend 24 hours with their father, who died before either of the boys got a chance to really know him. The spell gets botched, and they accidentally only summon old Pa's legs, so they embark on a quest to bring back his other half before the spell wears off. Like most of Pixar's greatest hits, it's supposedly steeped in poignant emotion. Apparently, writer-director Dan Scanlon based the movie off of the personal relationship he had with his brother after hearing an audio clip from his deceased father. Homeward, on the other hand, is a lot less personal. It takes a suburban fantasy built around a brotherly road trip structure and runs with it. Probably since those were the only two known elements to mock bust when Homeward rushed into production. Like Onward, Homeward also tells the tale of one Twiggy boy and his round brother. But in this one, one is an elf and the other is an adopted orc. The best part? The brothers in Homeward are named Lloyd and Barl Lightspinner, which are practically identical to Onward's Ian and Barley Lightfoot in both name and appearance. But that's about where the similarities to Onward end. Unlike Onward, which boasts an A-list voice cast, including mega-franchise darlings Chris Pratt and Tom Holland as the leads, Homeward only has two barely D-list actors on their top billing, Joey Lawrence and Tom Green. Yes, one-third of the Lawrence brothers and Drew Barrymore's ex. It shouldn't be much of a surprise that Green has maybe eight lines total, but it's actually impressive that they got Lawrence to play a lead role. Okay, so let's talk about all of the ridiculous things that happened in this movie, because there are a lot. For starters, what bath salts were the writers smoking when they came up with this backstory? In this universe, elves and orcs now live in peace following a battle in which a magic stone that gave the orcs mind control powers was destroyed. We open in the midst of their epic war, with the evil orc general Sharptooth leading an army of zombified big bigs. Luckily, there's an elven resistance that stands between him and world domination. For some reason, these guys are all hiding underneath potted plants like goddamn Looney Tunes. Why? Is that some kind of elvish lore within this universe that they never explain? While a battle that is undoubtedly the best animation this movie can muster rages, an orc and defector steals the power gem and brings it to an elf. He's like, give me your axe. And she's like, <laughs> he eventually convinces her to enchant the axe, but then this happens. Oh mighty axe, we give you the power to destroy the hate, destroy the fear, and to destroy this gem. Oh, wait. Oh. Whoa. Hurry, keep chanting. I can't, I'm done. There's no explanation! He didn't even get hit by a single arrow! Why can't he just finish the freaking spell? His random impotence means nothing, and the orc general shatters the rock anyway. This turns the bloodthirsty orcs into friendly Wreck-It Ralphs and ushers in an era of peace. Flash forward to the present. Elves and orcs coexist, but not really. They literally live in separate cities 200 miles away from each other, and orcs and elves go to heavily segregated high schools. 
I don't know what you studied in history class, but that's definitely not the definition of living together in perfect harmony. That's just passive aggressive racism. For some reason, one of our two main heroes, Barl Lightspinner, is the only orc at an all elf high school where his brother Lloyd also attends. We don't even know why Barl was adopted into an elf family. My guess is that his parents were white saviors who wanted to adopt an orc baby to make themselves seem woke. They don't even let Barl study magic at elf school. Apparently, after the war, elves are the only creatures allowed to study magic, so while Lloyd is gearing up to go to college at Kroon University, basically Magic Harvard, Barl is left behind intellectually. That's messed up. As characters, Lloyd and Barl have a very weird brother dynamic, mostly because Lloyd is actually super hardcore racist. He accuses Barl of sabotaging his chances of getting into Kroon University by pulling pranks on him. To prevent his baby bro from turning his graduation speech into Slime Time Live, he decides to drive him over 200 miles to New York City, where he plans to abandon him at a motel and leave him there till after he graduates from Elfdale High. I get not wanting to get nickelodeon in front of your whole class, but why is Lloyd so worried about it? They're not gonna ban you from going to college if you're the victim of a prank on graduation day. Also, hello, his solution is to leave his younger sibling in a strange place rife with street crime. By the time Lloyd figures out that his brother left the motel, Barl is already on the back of his hot new dangerous girlfriend's motorcycle being whisked away to embark on the gangsta lifestyle. Lloyd is stoked and drives 85 miles back towards Elfdale before his empathy kicks in and he remembers that maybe it isn't cool to let his younger brother join the orc mafia for no reason. Look at that serial killer intensity! He's like if Ted Bundy got busy with a Keebler. The gang in New Orc City is run by an evil mastermind named Rolf, a descendant of Sharptooth from that opening battle a thousand years ago. He has three cronies that all look like they just clocked out of a shift at Orc Topic, and to join their crew, all you gotta do is break the rules. They initiate Barl when they learn that he can perform elf magic, and as soon as he proves that he can stick his hand through a napkin holder, he's in! He's going through metal! <gasps> he also has to remember things. Whoa, I remember things. Easiest gang initiation ever. It's sort of hilarious to see the naive Barl bumble around like Winnie the Pooh while his new friends terrorize and shake down local shopkeeps. Side note, love the attention to detail in this scene with the bullet hole in the glass. Rolf's evil plan is to turn Barl into a magic-making Jesse Pinkman and excavate the remaining shards of the magic stone, then rekindle that old race whore. The stones are apparently stored inside twin statues, one in Elfdale and one in New York City. But here's the fun part. See how the New York City statue is stationed right outside of town on the side of the highway? When Rolf needs to break into it to get the stone, the statue magically teleports itself to essentially New York Times Square, and there's zero explanation. The animators have to be screwing with us at this point. This is just too obvious to be just laziness. That's not to say that the animation isn't lazy. There's barely any detail in the first battle scene, and it only goes downhill from there. You'll notice places where the animation just doesn't look quite right. For example, the orcs have a habit of mangling their bodies when they move. That's a bone fracture if I've ever seen one. Other times, the action will be very jilted, like when Barl winds up for a punch. The character designs aren't that much better. I'll give you a chance to guess which animals these characters are. Are they A, lizards, B, dragons, or C, frogs? If you guessed anything other than C, you're wrong, and so was I, because they absolutely look nothing like frogs. They're too tall and skinny. Frogs are stout and little. And why did they decide not to call these frogs lizards? Because their car runs on souped up hydraulics. These frogs are amongst the movie's long list of unnecessary side characters. There's a hot dog salesman that Lloyd talks to for like 10 minutes, an old lady who exists purely for some hack hard of hearing jokes, and a gothic elf that's mostly in this to sit on the poster and get bored emos to try to watch the movie. These characters not serving a role is endemic to a consistent problem across the board for this film. Characters just exist and things just happen for no reason other than to just happen. Like, even the rules on magic for elves in this movie don't really have any consistency. For example, when the orc gang kidnaps Lloyd and Barl to steal Lloyd's sack full of magic, Lloyd can't perform any spells. But a few scenes later, we see Lloyd use his magic to break his brother and his new orc girlfriend out of the big baddie's lair. So sometimes you need your magic bag and sometimes you don't? Uh? And then orcs aren't allowed to do magic, but it totally works when Barl tries his hand at spell casting for the very first time. 
The funniest plot hole in the movie for me comes at the end, when Lloyd and Barl are duking it out with Rolf in their high school auditorium, and Barl is able to sink a three-pointer into a vat of gak with a milk carton and defeat Rolf. Yep, that's a sentence. Remember how I said that Barl tried to prank Lloyd by sliming him at graduation? Well, Barl slimed both Lloyd and the principal in an earlier scene and was immediately expelled. Side quest, I love that in this fantasy universe, Tom Green yells at you for pulling pranks and not the other way around. But how did the giant vat of Gak get back up there above the stage? Elves don't pull pranks, only orcs do. So while Barl was getting kidnapped, driven out of town, and forced to join a gang, who replaced the bucket of slime? That will probably never get answers to any of the questions I asked here today, but that's not important. What's important is taking a moment to truly appreciate how terrible and ridiculous this movie really is. People actually worked on this, you guys! It didn't just come out of thin air! Asylum works under insane turnaround deadlines. According to a Vice interview they did last year, it only took them a little over a month to crank out their Aladdin mockbuster from pre-production to post. This is a whole animated feature made by like six animators. Onward was announced at D23 in 2017, so let's just estimate that they started production in January 2016. The first Onward trailer dropped last May, and Homeward is already ready for your viewing pleasure. So if you do the math, that means that they had less than a year to work on this monstrosity and they still banged it out before Onward is even in theaters. Again, this timeline is just an estimate, but if you look at the three weeks it took the Asylum to pump out Adventures of Aladdin compared to the two years it took Disney to make actual Aladdin, it's pretty impressive. If Homeward had a proportionally similar timetable in which to be made, that's lightning fast, y'all. And I get it! A lot of people hate mockbusters, because they're essentially just stealing someone else's intellectual property, slapping a new title on it, and releasing it as your own work. But honestly, the very nature of this coming out before Onward kind of makes it less plagiaristic. Instead, it's like Onward and Homeward are two takes on the same base writing prompt, only Disney made Onward with as much time as they needed to get the animation perfect, to cast the right voice actors, and to make sure the story doesn't fall apart. Homeward just kind of went, whatever gets me a C minus. <laughs> and at this point in time, it's not like mockbusters are plaguing as many unsuspecting consumers as one might think. I'd argue that most people watching are watching this knowing that it'll be a crummy knockoff and not the real deal. And that's okay. There's a market for enjoying trash art. After all, that's what we're doing right now. I guess what I'm trying to say is that Homeward is undoubtedly bad, but the fact that it's out before Onward is actually sort of an impressive feat. So if you want to watch this movie fully, because let's be real, you'll catch so many weird little gems that we didn't get to cover today. It's available on demand. Sure, it's an hour of your life that you won't get back, but I can guarantee you'll be giggling a whole bunch. Let me know in the comments how you feel about Mockbusters. Are they creatively deplorable, or do they have their own kind of magic about them? Like and subscribe to Nerdwire, and I'll be back next week to ruin your elf hood.